coming up on this episode of Let's Play Kotar. I also need to pay for parts so the wife can keep the droids running. Uh. It's all about the credits. Some guys will talk about honor and stuff, but they still sell their plates to Faza. I guess honor needs creds too. Based. Ha! <laughs> He's got a point. He does have a point. Bros, it's Carthy and Valen here, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Kotar. We got old Candy here too. You know, I figured I'd break out the men for the hunting lodge episode, boys. You know, it makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, Candy's got to level up, so let's do that real quick. Huh? Good to be back yet again for another episode, everybody. You know how it is. Hmm. Now, what to get next on old Candy? What to get next? Let me get him conditioning. You know, he is kind of a tank, so conditioning on him would be really good. Alrighty, guys, so we're gonna talk to a few hunters around here, uh, see what they can't uh, teach us. Are the, wait a minute, are those Gamoranians? You're saying it wrong. Gamorians? Whatever you wanna call them? Uh, oh dear. Uh, well, maybe, well, maybe we'll save them for last if I even talk to them. But this guy, Comad, we heard some pretty interesting things about him, so let's see what he's got to say. Yes, is there something you wish, human? Yes, there is something I wish. Information. If I could trouble such a worthy hunter for a moment. Nah, I'm not trying to butter this guy up. Stop trying to butter me up. Just a few questions, if that's all right. I see no harm in it. There are hours yet before I set back out on the dunes. Well, I'm looking for something. Who knows the planet best? No one that will return your questions. Hmm. To truly know the dunes, you have to live there, as the sand people do. Only they truly explore the land, but they attack without debate, if you see them at all. Yeah, the sand people are very vicious. When we're out there, we gotta be on our toes. Is Candorus having a talk with Maza right now? <laughs> so what about the Jawas? I've heard that they could have some useful information, perhaps. The Jawas may know the land as well, but are more interested in trading than talking. They scavenge to escape jobs akin to slavery. Their language is difficult. If you can get anything more than the price of a droid out of them, I'll be impressed. Huh. <laughs> well, I'm certainly gonna try. Have you ever seen the Sand People with anything odd? The Sand People carry nothing but weapons and bloodlust. To them, outsiders are invaders to be repelled. Once or twice, however, I have seen them emerge from older ruins with sacks and other containers. I've always been driven off. And if I examine the site later, there is nothing left. Very interesting. Hmm. Ruins on Tatooine. I wonder if there are many. No doubt the cave we seek with the star map inside of it is some sort of ruin. What kinds of ruins were those? Where were they? They were old storehouses of some kind. But you couldn't find them now, human. The sand covers all. I don't like sand. The only one who would know what was there are the sand people, and you would have to take it by force. Finding their encampment is easy enough. Walk south until you are attacked. <laughs> Walk south until you're attacked. Oh, that's, that sounds real safe. Well, tell me about yourself, Comad. What do you do? I am Comad Fortuna, a hunter and member of this lodge. It is not the life for everyone, but I am content. Hmm, I wonder if he has any relation to... They were no longer. <laughs> My. Nah, Fortuna's just probably a popular Twi'lek name or something. And where's the best hunting? The best hunting is wherever the best hunter is. That's right answer, human, but the only one I can give. It depends on what you see. Raid are plentiful, and are the spoils of the sport hunter. Dragons appear only to the true hunter. Patience is key. Great dragons hunt alone, and their prey is whatever can catch their attention. That's right, this guy was, uh, well, his father uh, took down a crate dragon, and I'm sure he's trying to do the same. So the dragons are rare. Are they dangerous? Kind of a dumb question, but... They are both rare and dangerous. And an honor to hunt. If you survive, you are blessed and favored. Respect them. 
Some try to lessen the risk by mass hunting with battle droids. I would rather hunt solo, taking the risk as my own. Battle droids? Roger, roger. But using battle droids to hunt? Now that's interesting. Hmm. So who actually uses battle droids? I will not speak of it while they live. It is their shame to admit or hide. They know the effect it has. Perhaps they will kill so many raid that they also kill the hunt. After that, perhaps the solo hunter will still prosper. Huh. Uh, I guess it's frowned upon to use droids around here. You think? I can kind of see why. And how long have you been at this, Comad? A decade? Two? I don't enslave myself to time, human. There is day, and there is night. Hmm, there's some wisdom in that. You have great wisdom, Anakin. Well, what can you tell me about the other hunters? Probably not as much as you would learn speaking to them yourself, even if they tell you nothing. The most obvious are the Gamorians, however. Oh. Rook and his crew are not the best company. They hunt, but often come back with salvage instead of hides or pearls. They think their prey walks upright. Now, unless he's talking about the Sand People bounties... Oh, dear. Well, wouldn't the guards have something to say about that? Are there, are there even guards here in, in Anchorhead? The dunes are far from the reach of their blasters. Besides, Gurk spends his money in company stores. Hmm. What about besides the Gamoranians? G -g Gamorians. Ah, put simply, Torak Queen is honorable. Kanasven is not so much. Huh. But I have no real quarrel with him. Dorak's honorable, but Tanis Ven not so much. Hmm. I think I could take a guess as to which one is using the droids. Huh. <laughs> well, I appreciate the talk, Comad. Uh, maybe I'll see you out on the dunes, buddy. Goodbye. Wood hunting. Nice guy. Nice guy. Uh, okay, who's next? We got. Oh, yeah, this is Dorak. Apparently, this guy's honorable, so uh, let's give him a talking to. Get lost, Tenderfoot. What? I hunt desert raid. I don't babysit. Jeez, dude. So much for being honorable. Maybe he's just in a bad mood. Well, come now. I just wish to benefit from your experience. Well, you sure know how to get on my good side. Huh? You're just trotting out bantha paths, but thanks all the same. Okay. I mean, it is literally why I'm here to, to get some knowledge from these hunters. As Francis Bacon once said, knowledge is power. So I'm looking for something. Who knows the planet best? You'll have to ask around. Comad Fortuna is a much more experienced hunter than I am. Mm. He hunts far from Anchorhead. Well, I already talked to him. The local Jawas are a good source of information, even if it is hard to understand them. It may cost you, though. Seems like at the end, we're probably just gonna have to try to talk to these Jawas. I can't abide those Jawas. Disgusting creatures. Well, tell me about yourself. My name is Doric Quinn. I'm a hunter. I hunt. Is that enough, or should I start listing my family birthdays? <laughs> Wait a minute, Quinn. Quinn, where have I heard that name before? Hey, Boxman, welcome to the stream, man. I was just swimming, I was figuring those tricks. Huh, anyway. And where's the best hunting, Quinn? If I knew the best place, why would I tell anyone? It would be worth too much to me to let it get out. It doesn't matter anyway. This season has been dry for me, as it has for almost everyone. Perhaps someone else is holding out, but there are simply fewer raid out there. Mm, maybe it's because of the guy with the droids. Why are there fewer raid? It used to be a one-on-one -on -one test. Hunter against hunted. Now people just want the credits. I could stomach maybe a pair or a team of hunters, but some now use battle droids. Oh. Where's the sport in that? I see. So who uses the battle droids? Maybe he'll actually tell me. That's not for me to say. I won't be a troublemaker in so small a community. Oh, you ain't no snitch. You'll see. Hunt, and you will see. Hmm, I guess it's like an ethical thing, you know, because it's not illegal to use the battle droids, but if they keep using them, then eventually there's just going to be no more raid left for anybody else. And how long have you been at this? I've tracked wild beasts my whole life, but I've only been hunting here for five years. I have much to learn yet. What do you want to learn? There are hunters that go after the big kills, the crate dragons. I don't know how they do it. I never even see the things. Comad is the one I respect, but I also trust that the only difference between us is experience. I will learn. All right, thanks for the information, Quinn. I'm going to go. Good hunting. Good hunting, my friend. Hmm. And there's these piggy boys over here. <coughs> 
Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna talk to them just yet. Uh, oh, there's this guy. Yeah, Tannis. Tannis. Okay. Hmm, I got. A, I got a feeling about him. What can I do for you? Hmm. Did my wife send you? What? This ain't about credits, is it? Uh, your wife? Wait, what? <laughs> uh, I'm looking for experts. You seem knowledgeable. Oh, of course. Who put you up to this? My wife? I meant what I said about having no credits. Oh my god. This guy seems like he might be suffering from the old wife aggro. Beta! I am looking for something, you see. Something very specific, yes. Who knows the planet best? Who knows the planet? I don't know. I guess the same people. I'm usually running when I see him, though. Hmm. Why are you running? Why are you running? And the Jawas? Smart traders. They've salvaged and sold me my own damaged droids once or twice. What? They don't see much I can understand. I think they're a little slow, but who am I to judge, huh? <laughs> huh. And have you ever seen the Sand People with anything, uh, odd? You know, anything out of the ordinary? Uh, sure. My blood. Oh! They almost got me last year. Tore up two of my battle droids. Wife was mad about that. <laughs> Took her weeks to fix. Where they got weapons to cut battle armor, I don't know. They act like animals, but they can surprise you. Say, I know it, I know it. This is the guy that uses the droids. Where did this happen? I don't know. Pick a dune and walk. They'll get you soon enough. Huh. Oh my god. It sounds like there's random encounters out there in the dunes. <laughs> well, let me ask about you and hunting. Hunting is a dirty and tough business. What can old Tannis tell you about it? Where would you say is the best hunting? There isn't any. Too many hunters, not enough prey. I can barely keep expenses covered. Maintenance on battle droids is expensive. Of course, it's better than going alone. What if I stumbled on a bunch of sand people? These solo hunters are crazy. Hmm. Sounds like he brings the droids for protection. So you hunt with battle droids. Is that sporting? What do I care? I need to eat. I also need to pay for parts so the wife can keep the droids running. Oh. It's all about the credits. Some guys will talk about honor and stuff, but they still sell their plates to Faza. I guess honor needs creds, too. Based. Ha! <laughs> He's got a point. He, he does have a point. Still, you don't want to hunt all the raid to extinction so nobody else can hunt, you know? I don't know. I guess there's a balance that needs to be had. Don't you need to take more kills to keep your droids running? I suppose, but so what? When that resource goes belly up, I'll just move on. I'm just a wandering spirit, I guess. I'm not real popular with the others, but they just fool themselves. They're in it for the credits, too. And how long have you been at this, Tannis? Too long. But it beats smuggling. You ever run into a Sith Dreadnought in the desert? No, you haven't. You've crossed paths with a Sith Dreadnought? Hell, I married her. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, no, seriously now. <laughs> I had this friend that crossed Sith space and got stripped of everything. It's not like I have much now, I guess, but I still prefer sand people to getting ambushed on unproven trade routes. You know, this guy, this guy might be, uh, you know, unethical using droids, but, but <laughs> I kind of like him. Uh, let's see. You go on about your wife a lot. What's the deal? Ah, she doesn't understand me. You know the drill. It's not my fault. She knew who I was when she married me. Mm-hmm. True, true. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure she did know. Now, what can you tell me about the other hunters? Uptight and cold, like my wife. <laughs> they don't like me streamlining the hunt with droids. I don't fit in, but I don't let it bug me. The Gamorians are different. Good rowdy drinking buddies. Girk and his boys. They understand that hunting is a business. Oh. Of course, they hunt other things than raid, too. Just don't turn your back on them, ever. Oh, goodness. <laughs> that is, that is terrible. What, what exactly, what exactly are you suggesting? Nothing. Nothing at all. Just keep your eyes on them, that's all. Oh, my God. What about besides the piggies? Dorak is reasonable. Comad is a pain, but he keeps his distance. I can tell he doesn't like me much. Ask around the lodge if you want information about the other guys. I don't really talk to him much. Hmm, okay. Very interesting. This has been very informative. Well, I have to go now, Tannis. Uh, good luck with your droid hunting. Good hunt. And with your wife. <laughs> okay, well, um, as much as I detest the Gamoranians, Gamorians, Gama what are the pigs? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna chat with them too, I guess. Uh, Look, it's the three little pigs. I don't know which one to talk to. Oh, Gurk, he's the leader, right? Ha <laughs> ha, boys, it talk to me. What do you want, Yumi? 
Gark has no time for you. There's only one language you Gamorians ever understand. A blaster to your forehead. <laughs> Ooh, Yumi has big enforcer. Oh, he's scared now. Ha, yeah, you tell him, Gark. Oh my god, Karth about to set these piggies off. Ahem. <clears throat> What if I wanted advice? I'm sure you're very smart. What? Hmm. You trying to get my secrets, I bet. Trying to find where I hunt, huh? I tell you nothing. Yeah, you get nothing. <laughs> oh, that's not nice. God damn. Well, I'm just looking for something. Are you good scouts? Oh, we are the best among everybody, but not for you. We hunters know more than everybody. Yeah, you go to the dirt yourself. Then maybe you're tough enough to talk to us. Probably not, though. Ah, yeah, probably not. Bet you don't come back. Shut up, stupid. What? <laughs> oh, this is. I don't think this is gonna work, guys. You know, why don't you let him speak? What? You deaf? Because he's stupid. He talks too much. You leave us alone now. I am not stupid. You are stupid. We're gonna make him turn on each other. Shut up, stupid! So can I ask, uh, <clears throat> what you pigs do? Kirk and his boys hunt. That's what we do and who we are. But we don't train babies like you. Babies? Yeah, we hunt the raid best out of everybody. We don't have time to train you or anyone. Some of the other hunters say you don't know how to hunt. I don't know if I should say that. I don't want to get these guys killed or anything. Well, fine. I'll just leave. You know, thanks for nothing, Gamoranians. As you Gamori, you pieces of shit. Yeah, you leave. That's good. <laughs> Maybe we see you out on the dunes. Maybe before you see us. What? Shots up, stupid! Well, that was kind of a creepy thing to say to me. What the hell, dude? Okay, um, hmm, yeah, we should definitely, uh, <laughs> watch our backs for more than just sand people, I think, out on the dunes. Hey, right, boys, well, we're gonna relax a little bit. I might play another game of Pazak with our buddy over there. Yes, what's on your so mind? So what do you think about all this, Karth? Tatooine's just a desert planet. I hear the mining isn't going so well. I bet the colony gets abandoned before long. Well, that's all I can think of, at any rate. Yeah, it'll definitely get abandoned, you're right. You got it. What about you, Candy? Yeah, what do you want? Oh, we could have some more war stories, I guess. Uh, but first, do you know anything about this world, Candace? What's your knowledge on Tatooine? Tatooine is one big desert with rocks sticking out. I heard that some of my people came here after the war, but I don't know what happened to them. Really? The world of my clan, Ordo, was much like this. Dust basins and rock crags. But my world at least has some green around the equator. This place is just sand all over. There are some vicious people on this world, but the desert is the real enemy. Trips out in the desert, especially the deep desert, should be taken very carefully. Oh dear. Do you have anything else you want to ask? Maybe we should take Anders with us. It seems like he's got some knowledge uh, of desert planets. So, uh, you got any more war stories for me, Candrus? Now might be a good time. You want another war story, huh? You want to hear about some other world getting wasted. What? Hmm? I knew you were the type. What? Your stagnant republic has never seen some of the strange creatures and races we fought on the Outer Rim in those years. <laughs> and you never will now. I guess not. Where did you fight this time? We were going through the asteroid fields of the Crispin system at the very edge of the galaxy playing with the pirates and smugglers we found there. The main belt in the Crispin system consists of mainly small rocks covered in frozen methane gas shells. Oh dear. And the pirates were using them for cover. Ha! <laughs> I remember using a thermal generator to cause the outer layer of one of the asteroids to vaporize in a picosecond. It blew out and shredded the three smugglers using it for cover. But that was a mistake. Oh, let me guess, it set off a chain reaction. Did it backfire? The asteroid I had targeted was smaller than most. Maybe a dozen meters on the side. On the outside, it looked the same as any other. Just a ball covered in frozen gas. Something must have been inside it. Something inactive. What? In the cold. The heat of my blast might have triggered something or woken something up. After I'd hit it, spots of light 
and heat appeared all over the thin shell, still covering it, evaporating the gases. What lay underneath looked like some sort of rocky growth, a deformed rock pitted by scores of micrometeorite scars. I think something even older might have been inside that. What? Okay, this is getting really, really interesting. What happened next? It started rotating faster and faster as we watched it. After a second, it started spraying fire. Thermal projectiles that melted our armor like wax. We were caught completely by surprise. <gasps> Before we could counterattack, it fled at an incredible speed. Holy shit, a ship! We couldn't catch it, but we could follow its hyperspace wake. We followed its trail as far as we could, heading away from the galactic core. When it finally led beyond the edge of our galaxy, we abandoned our efforts. Anything that wants to commit suicide in that great void is not worth our trouble trying to catch. Oh. That's the only story I have for now. I'll tell you some more stuff later if we get the chance. Is there something else you want to know? No, no, Canaris. That'll be all for now. Your choice. I'm here if you want something done right. What in the world? You have heard Candorus's tale of his encounter with an asteroid field on the Outer Rim, but do not know what to make of it. Maybe talking to him later will make things more clear. I know what to make of it. It was some kind of alien ship, but an alien ship not from the Star Wars galaxy, but from a galaxy outside the Star Wars galaxy. Dude, I told you it was aliens! That is, that is really trippy. That is really, really true, because very rarely do you hear about stuff that goes on outside the Star Wars galaxy in Star Wars. Anyway, so, kudos, kudos, I don't know how you say your name, but I'm ready for another game of Pazak if you are. Ah, welcome back. Would you care for another game? Very few of my old playing buddies come this way. Hmm, we could talk to him about Tatooine and stuff. Why not? Uh, so, uh, what, what can I ask you about Tatooine? What, what do you know about this old desert rock? Oh, I doubt I could tell you more than the rest of these fellows. I haven't set foot outside of Anchorhead, and I don't know why anyone would want to. Tatooine isn't a very hospitable place. I'll be going as soon as the parts for my ship arrive. It may take some time, though. Hmm, <laughs> he's just waiting for parts for his ship, and then he's getting the hell out of here. You know, I don't blame him. But it's different for us, because we're on a quest. Yay. Heard any rumors from off-planet? Nothing since that unfortunate business on Terrace. The Republic is reeling from that, as are we all. It is troubling. Yes, very troubling. But you can't let that call a stop to your day. We've survived worse, and we will again. It's just the way things are. Yes, life does indeed go on. So I think I'm ready for a game, but why do you play Pazak? The sport of it! Even if I lose, there is a reward in having played to the best of my ability. I don't dwell on the credits taken or given. To most people, the game is simply gambling, but I choose to get more out of it than that. Not many players see it that way. No, he's right. Most people, I'd say like 99% of people that play Pazak are doing it for the credits, but this guy does it for the sport, for the fun of it. And that's, there's a lot of honor in that, you know, that that's the kind of person who I'd want to play against. When it comes to any game, I want to play against the person who's doing it for fun, you know? Because even if you beat that person, they're usually going to still have a good time. I really like this dude. Uh, so let's have a game. We'll do another round like before. You made a good showing last time, and I like to keep things friendly. Bet what you wish. I prefer the sport to the reward. Bet what you wish. Oh, it's still only 75. I thought we were gonna raise the stakes! Oh well. Alright, so the last duel with this guy was pretty damn good. Let, let's see how this goes. Got an 8. 14, alright. 10, we're doing pretty good. 16. Oh, alright. Hmm. Boom, baby! Oh! That was lucky. 18, alright. Hmm. Do we stand on 18? He could end up using a card to win his first round, and then we would have a major hand advantage. So you know what? I know it sounds crazy. We could stand on 20. You know, we could get the 20 right now, but I'm going to stand on 18. Wow. Well, that was the worst thing that could have happened, and it happened. We don't, we don't, that's that's Pazak. That's Pazak. Okay, we're standing on 19 now. There we go. Look at that. See, I didn't have to waste a card. 
You want to try to keep the hand advantage in Pazak, guys. That is the key. That is the key. Alright, 19 again. We're going to stand on 19 again. Alright. Now that he's two, you know, he's got two, we got to we gotta pull out all the stops to try to win now. No more standing on 19 if we can help it. But we have a big uh, hand advantage, as you can tell. 21, 17. He's going to stand on 17. You see that? Uh, now, we could win here. We could win here. But I got a feeling we're going to get lucky. Ready? Ooh. All right. Well, we're going to use... Um, we could use either the minus 3, the minus 2, or the minus 1 to win here. I'm going to use the minus 3. I feel like that's going to be a little better. You know, the minus 1 and the minus 2 are technically more valuable. All right, here we go. This is it, the, fi the final countdown. Oh, we got 15. I really don't like that. I don't like that we have 15. Being that this is the final round, right? And like, it's all down to this. It's all down to this. I'm going to play the minus six so that we're like not as ahead of him as we are right now. 15, 18, and he's standing on 18. 18 plus two, and we win, baby. You see, boys, I'm getting so good at Pazak. Damn, you know you're not bad, man. This is the second time you've beaten me now. What a skillful game that was. I am very impressed. You're shaping up to be a fine competitor. I hope you keep playing and begin to see the long-term rewards of the game like I do. You know, I really am. I'm starting to see the fun in it. Like, the fun in winning Pazak, even though I am winning. <laughs> but it is, a, it is a fun game when you really think about it strategically like, like I'm beginning to. Well, thank you, uh, as always, my friend, and I'll be going. Safe travels, Wayfarer. Okay. Well, guys, I think that's going to do it for this episode. A big talking episode, I know, I know. But in the next one, uh, there'll probably be even more talking because I'm going to check out the cantina. He did mention there was a cantina. So, yeah, we're going to look around Anchorhead some more in the next one. But thanks so much for joining me, Box Bros. This has been The Box Man. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, as always, for more outstanding Let's Plays. Until next time, me and the boys will catch you later. Sorry about that, Carth. Peace out, everybody.